Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna do a album battle here. Heaven and Hell's The Devil You Know versus Black Sabbath 13. This is the final day of Black Sabbath week, so I thought, not, why not finish it off with a huge competition between these two albums right here. So we'll start off with which one came first, that would be Heaven and Hell. The Devil You Know, the only studio album by Heaven and Hell. Man, I wish they could have made more albums than just this one. This is a great album. Uh, this is Doom Metal, uh, Sabbath with Dio. Some people didn't like that. I'm trying to show you the back, but it's reflecting really bad. Um, oh, there we go. If I show it right there, it doesn't reflect. But yeah, this was the only Doom Metal... Well, I guess you could say that the Humanizer was sort of... Do well, I, I do consider the Humanizer Doom Metal. Except maybe not TV Crimes. That wasn't really... Doom Metal, that was more like uh, something you'd hear on Mob Rules or Heaven and Hell, but with Dehumanizer, that was the start of Doom Metal Dio, pretty much. And uh, that led, of course, to Dio's Dehumanizer and him just going in a really doomy direction. And uh, that carried over in the 2000s with this album, uh, The Devil You Know, which before that, they had a compilation called the Black Sabbath The Dio Years, and I actually don't own The Dio Years, I bought this bootleg. Uh, it's called uh, Murray's Treasure Chest Volume 1. This has every single, like, deep cut with Dio on it you could ever want. Uh, let me see. That'll focus. There we go. Has every deep cut you could ever want. Like Electra, The Devil Cried, Shadow of the Wind, Ear in the Wall. Which, uh, The Devil You Know, Shadow of the Wind, and Ear in the Wall. Those are the tracks, the new tracks that were added on to Dio Years uh, compilation. Uh, but also it had like uh, the you know Dio band songs like Prisoner of Paradise, Annika or Annika, After All the Dead Eye. Those were live tracks from. I'm not sure where that's from. Hold on, does it say where that's from? Bonus songs from 1999's Dio's Inferno, The Last and Live, a live album, Black Sabbath Originals. I guess that's where those are from. But you get those. Time to Burn, God Hates Heavy Metal, The Next Time, which was a demo from the Dehumanizer Sessions. Uh, like the Beat of a Heart live version, Hide in the Rainbow, which I don't know how that didn't make a Dio album, it should have. Hungry for Heaven, This Bud's for You, which was a Budweiser commercial. And then Slapback, which was a demo that Black Sabbath, with a Dio demo with Black Sabbath, that Tony Iommi actually issued a cease and desist whenever that got leaked to the world. Which I really hope someday that whole Black Sabbath uh, lawsuit thing gets settled. By the way, I'm wearing a Black Sabbath shirt, you can't see because like, I'm so close to the camera. <laughs> but uh... Yeah, I hope someday that Black Sabbath, like, a lawsuit thing gets settled so we can actually hear some of those unreleased songs. I'd, I'd really like to hear some of them. Because you hear Slapback on this? Sounds fantastic! Even though it's a demo, like, I really hope they can get that sorted out someday. Because I would just love a whole box set filled with unreleased demos. That'd be so cool. With every era of Sabbath, that'd be so awesome. I can dream, but that probably is not going to happen. But I guess never say never, because I never thought a Tony Martin box set would happen, and it did, so... What do I know? What does anyone know, I suppose? So anyways, uh, back to this. So we'll just say this is the Dio years. And the Dio years compilation reunited the Dio era of Sabbath. Originally, they were going to have Bill Ward join that group. But uh, they went with Vinny Apice because Bill Ward had some uh, musical differences with some of the fellers. He didn't specify which ones, I don't think. And uh, that reunion for that Greatest Hits compilation with the three bonus tracks led into, of course... The Devil You Know by Heaven and Hell, it's not under the Black Sabbath name. And for the longest time, I actually thought that was because of like a lawsuit thing. Maybe Ozzy and Sharon didn't want uh, Tony to use the Black Sabbath name with Dio. That's not the case, though, because I watched this one interview with Dio in it, and uh, I'll play that right now for you. In, initially, I thought it was going to be called Black Sabbath, because the, the album that, that preceded it was called Black Sabbath The Dio Years. Uh, so it wasn't that we weren't weren't Black Sabbath before. Certainly we were with uh, you know with three albums, four counting the live album. So I thought it was going to be that. But then the suggestion was made by someone, I, I might have been Tony, that we call it something else, uh, and not for the reason that most people think. I think most people think that there was a contractual problem or that somebody else owned it. I'm sure they're going to blame Sharon Osbourne for it, you know, and it's absolutely untrue. I think it's good to blame her for most things. The, the, the weather today, I'm blaming on Sharon Osbourne. Well, you know, I think they do blame her for absolutely everything, you know, and that's probably very unfair too. Uh, but it was to differentiate us from the, from the Sabbath that had come before. What it really did was this. It allayed this. Hey, play Iron Man. We didn't have to worry about that or feel bad about not playing those songs, about playing Iron Man or Paranoid or Black Sabbath or 
um, fairies wear boots. We didn't have to do that because we tried to differentiate ourselves uh, by a timeline and by a name that, of course, spoke so much of, when you think of Heaven and Hell, you usually think of that song, so now you think of this band. And I think it was wonderful that it worked so well. And do you feel, though, obliged to play some of those hits, as you, as you just named there, when you play a festival which, well, it's a festival, so lots of people have come to see lots of different bands. In a way, maybe, I suppose, you should give them the hits, go, this is what we're famous for. Well, you know, it's not what I was famous for. And I'm part of this band. Well, what they were famous for that with, I mean, I don't hear Ozzy doing Heaven and Hell. So why should I do the other songs? And, and I think that's very sensible. Uh, you know, we come from the different generations of Sabbath. The, the, you're really the two generations that were most important, I think. Um, and no, it's, it's just, I, I think we tried so hard to call this band by a different name that why go back and relate to that? I mean, it, it makes us really seem, you know, hypocrites, I think, to do that. So there you have it. It's not because of some legal thing. Uh, they just did it to differentiate themselves from Sabbath with Ozzy. Um, so that settles that long-standing thing that everyone's debated for so long. But anyways, I, I, can st I still consider this Black Sabbath, even though it's under the Heaven and Hell name. Just because it it's literally Sabbath. You hear this, it it's Sabbath. You can't tell me otherwise. So there's the front, of course. There's the back. I always like to think that that... Uh, demonic creature right there is the devil baby from born again which i didn't grab my born again cd but um yeah i always like to think that's like the the devil baby from born again all grown up makes for an interesting theory then you pop this open right here your artwork and the cd and of course I, i'm gonna show i'm gonna showcase like the whole cd and everything while i talk about the song so you got atom and evil that's the opening track and all these tracks are really doomy but really really catchy of fear, I could say the same thing for. They all have killer choruses. Tony Iommi has the Doomy guitar riff, same with Geezer's bass. Uh, you have Vinny Apice pounding on the drums, and you've got Dio's melodic, like, um, I don't want to say like older is a bad thing, but he Dio does, you know, he was like 66, I think, when he recorded this, 67. I'm not, I'm not sure. It was like right before he passed away, though. And I actually like Dio's older vocals a lot. Um, for being a feller who was almost in his 70s, he actually sounds really good. And uh, he definitely didn't lose his ability to sing. He just got a very deep voice. But, you know, that's not a bad thing. Um, sometimes his voice would crack during, like, live performances and stuff. But, you know, it's not unlistenable. And, of course, it's going to happen sometimes when you're singing live. You're going to have voice cracks. I mean, everyone's human. No one has perfect pitch. Even people with the most perfect pitch on the planet can't sing, you know, th their voice are going to crack sometimes. It's, it's just bound to happen. Dio's voice cracked whenever he would sing. Michael Jackson sing. When Michael Jackson would do songs, his voice would crack. And uh, pretty much any, like, really, really good singer, they they voice crack before. Because they're humans, you know, it's going to happen. <laughs> and then when you take the disc out, you get this artwork of Henry, just on a light background. Henry the devil. Or angel? Is he supposed to be an angel or a demon? I'm not. I'm not sure what he's supposed to be, but uh, yeah, you get the artwork of Henry. It's kind of funny though that even they were, even though they were using the heaven and hell name, Henry was still there. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So that's the devil, you know. I really do love this album. You got. Uh, I don't think I finished reading off the rest of the titles. But you get Adam and Evil, Fear, Bible Black, Double the Pain, Rock and Roll Angel, The Turn of the Screw, Eating the Cannibals, Follow the Tears, Neverwhere, and Breaking to Heaven love this album. I know some people don't like it because it's doomy. It's, you know, it's not like, um, mob rules over here. I mean, it can't, it, you can never duplicate mob rules. There's only one mob rules and they aren't trying to duplicate mob rules. They try to go in a new doomy direction. I, I really think it worked. I love the production on this album. Love Tony Iommi's guitar work, Geezer's bass, Dio's vocals, and I almost said Vivian. No, it's not Vivian Campbell. It's Vinny Apice on drums. Love his drums. My favorite drummer of all time. So that's Heaven and Hell. Uh, the Devil You Know, right there. And my favorite track of this album would be Bible Black. I love that song. But if you ask me on another day, I might say Double the Pain, just because how killer that chorus is. But that's my favorite off this album. And of course, we're facing off Heaven and Hell's The Devil You Know against Black Sabbath 13. The last album by Black Sabbath, unless you want to count the MVP, which I have a bootleg copy of. It's the same um, album, just with a jewel case instead of a digipack. Which I honestly kind of prefer, because, you know, Digipex, this one right here, well, this one's not falling apart, but I do have a Digipack version of Master Reality, where the little spine, you see this little spine right there, where it's starting to, like, bend, and, like, I think eventually it's gonna, like, snap. 
So that is like the really only the down the only downside of digi packs is they do wear down over time. Jewel cases like this one right here that's cracked. You can always replace those. So I get the I get why some people prefer digi packs. I'm not sorry, not digi packs. Uh, why some people prefer jewel cases over digi packs? I totally understand because this if this gets like if I chuck this against the wall, which I would never do, uh, you could always replace the you know the jewel case part. You couldn't replace if I chuck this against the wall and the spine breaks. Uh, I guess I could try to duct tape it together, but yeah, good luck with that. But anyways, back to- sorry, I get really sidetracked. Uh, Black Sabbath, The End of 13. I always thought they could, you know, combine those last four tracks onto 13, but they, they just didn't. They decided to make it like a little thing you could grab at the end shows, and that's the only way you could obtain it. Of course, this is a bootleg. I got this on eBay bundle with Born Again. Definitely worth the purchase. It's like $33, but I didn't care to pay for it because I really just wanted to hear those four songs on the back. I only ever heard them on YouTube, and I wanted to own them. And of course, you do get four live tracks, too. So, good deal. Uh, it could probably... I don't even know why it's called an EP, because it's as long as, like, an actual album. But, um... Yeah. I would love, like, a 13 Deluxe Edition someday. I know this is technically the Deluxe Edition, but I'd like a Super Deluxe version of it. Especially with the remix, because here's my main complaint with 13. I'm not a big fan of the production of this album. I don't like the way it sounds. All of the songs sound the same because of the production. The production hurts this album. And I think what really, and what definitely hurt this album was not having Bill Ward. When Sabbath lost Bill Ward, that was a huge loss. Because you can just tell that Bill's missing. And I think had they had Bill Ward's jazz drumming on this album, it would have elevated it 100%. And I think that's what really hurts 13 as an album. And of course the production. And also, um, someone, one of my viewers pointed this out to me. When 13 was being recorded, Tony Iommi had a cancer diagnosis, so he thought time was very, very limited uh, when he had when he got his first uh, cancer diagnosis. Because you know he, j Ronnie James Dio passed away from stomach cancer uh, not too long ago, so Tony Iommi really thought that his time on Earth was very, very short. So if you read interviews and stuff, Tony talks about just rushing through this album and getting to the tours as fast as possible. And I think he also did chemotherapy while doing the tour. So, uh, the strength that, that he had is unbelievable. And thankfully now, Tony Iommi is cancer-free, so that's great. But that, that right there, like, the rushing through the album, I understand why he did it, but it really did hurt this album. Uh, because his, this is really the only time I can really say that Tony Iommi wasn't bringing his best riffs to the table. Because every other Black Sabbath release, Tony Iommi always had some killer guitar riffs in it. But here, I mean, Into the Beginning has a cool one, even though that one's a reused one of Shadow of the Wind, and I think that also is on Breaking into Heaven, I think that's the right song. He, he, I think that's the right song, I could have that wrong. But he reused the same riff three times for Shadow of the Wind, Breaking into Heaven, I think that's the song I'm thinking of. And then Into the Beginning, he reused that same guitar riff. Someone pointed that out to me as well, and I, I was like, wow, he really did. Um... God is Dead, Loner, Zeitgeist, which really tries to go back to like that Planet Caravan and Solitude feel from uh, Paranoid and Master of Reality. Age of Reason, Live Forever, Damaged Soul is probably the best song off this album if you ask me. Uh, Dear Father, Methodemic, Peace of Mind, Pariah, Naivety, and Black. Those are the four bonus tracks I just listed off at the end. There's the back. And of course, this is one of those little things where if you move the al album around, you can see the fire. It's really cool. But I think Ozzy sounds great on this album. His, vo his vocals do sound a little processed at times, but he still sounds great. Geezer's bass, I can't really hear the bass on this album that well. Um, and of course, if you pop this open, there's a tree. I don't know if the camera can focus on that. There's a tree right there. I'm not a big fan of the packaging on this album, where you have to pull the discs out. I always feel like I'm going to like scratch them or something like that. And then in the middle, you get your did. I'm sorry, not your digi pack. You get your booklet. <laughs> I can't communicate properly. You get your booklet right there, and... Uh, there's Ozzy right there. Lyrics. I'll show you the lyrics for all the songs. Picture of the band. Another picture of the band right there. And then more lyrics. That's 13 booklet. With all the recent Black Sabbath remixes we've been getting, I hope someday we get a remix of 13. Because it has potential, like Forbidden. I just think the production holds it back. I'd love to see a remix version of 13 because the songs are good, 
the riffs aren't that memorable, but the songs are good. Um, and Ozzy's vocal melodies are great. Can't really hear the bass. I'd love to hear the, if the bass got elevated in the mix. And I, I, I would love to hear like a Bill Ward drumming on this album. Just have Bill Ward re-record all the drum parts. Which they should be able to do that, because the Aussie era of the band, they're allowed to use unreleased material from that era, and only that era, uh, from what I've read. So they could have Bill Ward re-record the drums, and I hope they do that. And of course, 13 was produced by Rick Rubin, and I'm just not a big fan of Rick Rubin's production. I know Ozzy wasn't a big, produ uh, big fan of Rick Rubin's production on this album, from what I've read. Uh, and I tend to agree, because every album Rick Rubin produced, it always sounds so compressed. Death Magnetic by Metallica sounds compressed. Oh, it's Slipknot's Volume 3 sounds really compressed. Corey Taylor didn't even like working with them. The only albums I can really think of that I liked uh, Rick Rubin produ producing were the Johnny Cash albums, the America uh, Johnny Cash albums. Those are all really good, but everything else, I'm just, I'm just not a big fan of his pr production on a lot of stuff. Even that one ACDC album I was forced to listen to didn't like the production that much. Um, I mean, it worked for a few songs, but eh. I I'm just not a big fan of him as a producer. I think uh, with Slayer, he did some Slayer albums, those were good, but other than that, yeah, it's a really hit or miss. It's either really good or really bad, and this one, it's really bad. I, w I really want a 13 remix, and I'd like to see a remix of Heaven and Hell too, but mostly 13, just because I think this album needs it more. And this is what the disc looks like, in case anyone was wondering. If I'm picking a winner for this battle, it's gotta be Heaven and Hell's The Devil You Know. Of course I know people love 13, so if 13's your favorite of the two, that's great. And there's no wrong answers here. You're allowed to like both of these albums. They're both, you know, they both have their unique, um, qualities. And it's okay to like one more than the other. Of course, I like this album more than 13, so I think this one's the best out of the two. Of course, you could think 13's the best uh, over this one, and that's fine. There's no wrong answers here. But thank you all so much for watching these videos, and thank you for being so supportive of Black Sabbath Week this year. Uh, it'll be back in 2025. Spoiler warning. Yeah, I know, that was... I did it backwards, but Black Sabbath Week is coming back in 2025. And probably every week I continue to do my YouTube channel. It's gonna be back, because people love it. And I love it, too, because... I love talking about Black Sabbath, or Heaven and Hell, or whatever you want to call it. It's, this is Black Sabbath, and this is Black Sabbath. Uh, so thank you all for watching. I had no idea, though, that so many of you didn't know what I looked like. Because uh, I did this film series a long time ago called The Bear, and I'm, I guess it's just because that was a limited audience on the gaming channel that not many of you knew what I looked like, but... It really surprised me, because I, I thought everyone knew what I looked like. I guess not, but uh, yeah, I'm glad you fellas like the face cam stuff. I'm definitely doing this in the future, because it's just so much easier to edit than doing the voiceover stuff constantly, and trying to find images for every little thing I'm talking about. It's just so much easier to show my face, and then just edit that stuff in later. Uh, so thank you all so much for your support. Until next time, see you later, and uh, go listen to Black Sabbath.